فنحمد ونستعين ونستغفر ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتد ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله امام المرسلين وخاتم النبيين وصفوه من الخلق اجمعين سيدي سادات العرب والعجم فخر ربيع مضرف يا ايها الراجون شفاعته أكثر من الصلاة عليه <تصفيق> اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه سلم سيدنا كثيرة تدت عين بنظر وعد أذن بخبر وقفرت السماء بمطر وتنفس كل حاقد من قهر رب شرح صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني أفقه قولي أما بعد Praise be to Allah سبحانه وتعالى The one we ask help, mercy, forgiveness We seek refuge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the bad deeds of our self and the evil of our souls. Whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided will never be misguided. But whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguide, leave them to be straight, abandon them, leave them to be in charge of their own self, they will never be guided. They are in serious trouble. I bear witness there is no Lord or deity worthy to be worshipped. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one and only one, and Muhammad, peace be upon him, his servant, his messenger, the best and purest of Allah's creation, the face of glad tidings, the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As to follow my dear brothers and sisters, honorable believers, respected elders, the best greetings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to all of you, and upon all the bright faces that came to prostrate, make sujood to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One and only one deserving of your sujood and to all the sincere hearts that finds comfort, happiness, satisfaction, content, trust, success with Hada al-Azim, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As to follow my dear brothers and sisters, honorable believers, today's khutbah, today's reminder, and the reminder benefit the believers. You walk out of this masjid with benefit, that means you have a good heart. It doesn't mean there's a good speaker, no. It means you have a good heart to absorb the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the teaching of the engineer of happiness and the champion of success, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today's matter, it is really serious matter, very hot matter, and that is domestic abuse and domestic problems. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us what does it mean to get married and why you should get married. Is it for you just to have a title that you are married? Is it because you want to have your wife's picture on your shoulder and walk in the street? Look at my wife? No. Take a look what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Holy Quran. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا وَجَعْلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, and from his signs that he created for you wives, azwajan, litaskunu ilayha, from among yourself, min anfusikum, from among yourself, what for ya rabbal alameen, what's the purpose that you created the wife, litaskunu ilayha, so you may dwell in tranquility, tranquility means peace in the mind, peace in the heart, so this is the purpose of the marriage, peace in the mind, peace in the heart. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً وَرَحْمَةً And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put among you affection, mawadda, warahma, mercy. Take a look at the beginning of the verse. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us that the lady is created from you. From where? From the rib. Is the rib in the fist so you could punch her? No. Is the rib in the foot so you could kick her? No. The rib Precise, precision from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The rib is next to the heart, so you may love her, be merciful upon her, show affection, show TLC, tender love and care. This is the purpose of the marriage. My dear brothers and sisters, we have lots of problems, domestic problems. And let me exhibit some of them in this very short time. And here, here in Canada, here in Toronto, here in Mississauga, I'm not talking about in the moon, we have it. And sometimes we are wearing that social mask. Social mask, we pretend that we are fine and everything is great. No, we do have serious problems. Kaf kalla, 
Kafka left means a slap caused a person dearly. He was arguing with his wife and this here in Toronto. He slapped his wife. She jumped right away to 911. Well, yeah, your wife is not a punching bag. And for you, you don't make salah. Don't try to tell me that, no, you know what? In Islam, so and so. No, you know, your wife is not a punching bag. He slapped her. She called 911. Instead of her calling one Allah, she called 911. Instead of her calling two of her parents and two of his parents, right, to make some kind of reconciliation or peace, she jumped to 911. We could not stop her. I did not know about the story till it's too, too, too late. The police kicked him out of home. He's not allowed to come home. What happened? Is there any marriage counselor? Is there anyone to extinguish the fire? By the way, islah datil bayn. In a situation like this, it's much higher than the nafil salah and the nafil ibadat. Islah datil bayn means fixing between two people a husband and a wife, in a situation like this, you are highly rewarded. Is there anyone who come to fix between them? The answer, no. So he came, he met the wife's brother downstairs, and this is what the brother told me. He said, I'm going to go and talk to your sister, even though he's not allowed to go home. Talking to her, brother called me. This is the time when I knew about the story. Please come and try to make peace between them. Fine, I will come. This time, as soon as I arrived, I found a body in the ground. Police, yellow, stripped. What happened? He killed his wife. He killed her sister. He left a baby and he phoned, he phoned a brother-in-law. And he said, come see what happened. And he went to the 18th floor. From where he lived, the shaitan told him, go to the 18th floor. He jumped, killed himself. I buried them with my own hand, three of them. And I looked, subhanAllah, when the government of Canada, and may Allah bless Canada, from the bottom of my heart, trust me, may Allah bless Canada for all type of services, especially the medical services that we are seeing, and others, may Allah protect Canada. Right. When I saw the government of Canada sending three cars for everybody, and I was number four volunteer, I looked, I said, subhanAllah, well, we're going to bury them after we made the janazah. I said, subhanAllah, maybe they needed five minutes, someone to extinguish the fire. Maybe they needed half an hour. Maybe they needed 10 days. It's better than killing himself, killing his wife, killing her sister. Disaster upon disaster. Catastrophe. Real catastrophe. In situation like this, run to the divorce. Divorce is much more merciful. Rahma fi talaq there is mercy in divorce. Don't run to the knife. Don't run to your anger. Because minutes, no minutes. Wallahi, two seconds. One, two. Two seconds of anger, you would never compensate how sorry you will be for the rest of your life. We have problems, my dear brothers and sisters. What should I learn from this story? You learn number of things. Number of things. One, don't grab your anger and show you are macho. Another thing, we have to be those firefighters to extinguish the fire between husband and wife. Your brothers and sisters, honorable believers, so therefore, divorce has so much of mercy. And my brother, don't dare to cough at home. Don't dare. Coughing, tis'al, don't cough at home. You're not allowed to cough at home. Why? Because when the husband called me and he said, my wife kicked me out of home and called the police. And then later on, for me to make certain reconciliation, to make what's so-called conditional discharge. Most of you heard of this term, legal term. Conditional discharge, it cost us almost $3,000. He said, I was only coughing at home, coughing. She kicked me out and she called the police and we lost everything and the agreement and the money. I found the wife. I said, did you really kick him out? She said, yes. Why? He said he was, can yis'al, yis'al. I said, yis'al, coughing? Yes, he was coughing, and he waked up my son. I said, isn't that his son also, biological son? Yes, it's his son, biological son, but he wake, 
He worked him out. <coughs> Subhanallah. Look how terrible we are becoming. Look how terrible. And you're telling me we are Muslims. Wallahi looking like a Muslim is so easy. But the real manners, it's the Islamic manners. Anyone can look like a Muslim. But the real issue is dealing as a Muslim. Not kicking a husband because he was just coughing and he woke up. He woke up the son, his own son. He can't help coughing. That's how terrible we are becoming, my dear brothers and sisters. Another terrible matter. In our community, we have what's so called a social aggression. Vum ishtimai. Social aggression. And I've seen it. I've seen it many times. You will find a guy, a young guy, may Allah guide him, he's drinking alcohol, may Allah guide him. He's taking drugs, may Allah guide him. He's doing X, Y, Z, may Allah guide him. He's doing all type of things which is wrong, may Allah guide him. And then now his mom and dad want him to get married. With this situation, they try to find the best woman, good woman, with the hijab, with the salah, with manners, with, with, with. May Allah take him away from this gear. Go be guided elsewhere. Don't use this gear. This is called actually a social aggression. When your son is alcoholic, when your son is troublemaker, when your son is so and so, and you try to get him married to the best, of the best, the cream of the creams, in the name of, well, she may guide him. Well, you know, let him be straightened. No, 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 no. You are destroying another life. This is actually one of the great reasons of our trouble for this society that you see so much of divorce or so much of degradation in relation because there's no compatibility. You have an iPhone and you have a Samsung you can't just like this to this. It's two different things. They're not compatible. You can't plug like this charger, the Samsung to the iPhone, and plug like the Samsung verse. You can't. There's no compatibility. It does not work. And that's what we're trying to do. You plug so many things together in relationship that they are not compatible. It does not work. It's heading for a trauma and a drama and a catastrophe, my dear brothers and sisters. Honorable believers, another serious problem we have in the community when the husband is saying to the wife, I'm going to divorce you, I'm going to divorce you, or using the word divorce so many times. One of those people, I said to him, I'm going to scan your life and see how many divorce. He said, please don't. He said, please don't, Muslim. He said, please don't. I said, why? He said, maybe I divorced my wife a hundred times. I said, that's fine. hundred times? Say, yeah. I said, so you are happy that you are living in the haram. Why? Because every time he gets angry, he tell her, I'm going to divorce her. Or he said, you are divorced. And what happened? Divorce happened. And then he ended up using and consuming 30, 40 divorces. This is for real. And he's so scared that it's OK for both of them to live in the haram. Terrible, terrible situation happening in our community, my dear brothers and sisters, honorable believers. And one of these terrible situations, when a husband, when a husband argue with the wife, they dispute, they fight, they separate. It becomes an opportunity of vengeance, an opportunity of getting revenge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala taught us in the Holy Quran that Allah, if you separate, Allah would provide abundance from his bounties to each and every one of you. This is a verse in the Holy Quran. If you separate in divorce, Allah will provide abundance from his bounties to each and every one of you. But when they separate in divorce, it becomes a battle. It becomes vengeance. It becomes so much of aggression. And who's the tools? Which is the weapons? They're using the children. I met a wonderful young guy. He helped me in a, in a health store. I was buying honey. He helped me. And then he recognized my name and he said, oh, you, you actually, we know you so and so. And then I said to him, oh, OK, I, I hear that you're not talking to your dad. Let me invite you and your dad for lunch or dinner. 
He said, no. I said, hey, let's do Birr al-Walidayn, Birr kindness to parents. It's OK, seven years ago, and your mom got upset. And they fought together. The, the price shouldn't be that high to lose the children and to become enemy. Shouldn't be. I said, come to Birr al-Walidayn. Birr al-Walidayn means kindness to parents. He said, my Birr to my dad is not to see him and punch him in the face. I will say to the wife, congratulations for you as a loser. Why? Because when you make your all children hate their dad, when you make all your children wants to hit their dad and wants to curse their dad and they're cursing their dad and dad's relative and you sever the relation and you make them enemy to their dad, I say you are a big loser because the aquq, the aquq al-walidayn being terrible and hard and harsh and rotten to your dad, this punishment will be in this life and in the hereafter. Your son will never become a big winner. He will never be happy. His misery, his sadness, his disastrous results in this aggression, his manners will reflect to your life. When your son lives a miserable life, don't think he's going to be a great son for you. Don't think using the son and the daughter to hit the father or using the son and the daughter to hit the mother, don't think that you're going to have successful children. You're going to have miserable children. In return, you will suffer this misery. You will taste this very painful misery. <laughs> الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وآله وصحبه أجمعين في سندسة في قناة الطافق محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم May Allah سبحانه وتعالى reward our Prophet to the best of what he deserves on our behalf on behalf of the past and future Muslim generations اللهم أمين Respected brothers and sisters and our believers we have another serious problem that you deal with your wife and you think that she is perfect and she deal with you and she think that you are perfect this is a big problem we should deal with each other having mercy on our ضعف. We have, should have mercy on our weakness and our shortcoming. Deal with your wife as a person who has shortcoming. She has weakness. She has nuts. And she should deal with you as a person who has nuts and ضعف and shortcoming and weakness. This way, we don't expect perfection from each other. This way, we tolerate each other. If you adopt this manner and this behavior, that you deal with your husband or your wife, that they are not perfect. They have shortcoming, they have weakness. The marriage will survive the turbulence. We have so many turbulence in this life. And speaking of this life, Rasulullah said, life is a joy. Life is joy. And the best joy in this life is a good wife. According to Rasulullah not only that, when they came to prostrate for Rasulullah to show you the value of the man, he refused that prostration. He said, if I were to order anyone to prostrate to anyone, I would order the wife to prostrate for the husband. So my dear brothers and sisters, we do have problems in the community. We have domestic problems, serious problems. When the brother said to me, Brother Ahmed, can I speak with you with five, for five minutes? And this is in Ramadan, not this Ramadan, few Ramadans back. Can I speak with you for five minutes? That five minutes took about three hours in the car. What's your problem? He said his wife is cheating. I said, why are you saying that? What's your proof? He said, she's being friendly with her manager. He recorded that for her. Can you listen to that? I said, I don't want to listen. Listen. I said, well, why? I don't want to listen. He said, just listen to this short part. He played it. I said, to him, Wallahi, there is no cheating in that. The cheating is yourself. You are the one who cheated yourself. Why? Because your wife was wearing a hijab. She was making a salah. She was taking care of her children. You said to her, it's okay, take off the hijab. It's okay, you make the salah later. Add them all when you come at night. It's okay, mix with everyone. It's okay, ignore the children for that few extra money to pay your miserable mortgage. And I mean it, miserable mortgage. 
It's okay. Get rid of these things. Do you expect when she comes home, she tells you, I want to read Al-Bukhari or I want to read the Quran with you. You made her get rid of her hijab, get rid of her salah, mix with John and Don and whoever in the zoo, and you expect her to come? Anyhow, that five minutes ended in three hours. After that, he was so relaxed, so content that his wife is not cheating. Wallahi, my dear brothers and sisters, wallah, from his left hand, he pulled a big knife like this. It can kill a cow so easy. Cow! He started crying. He said he was planning to kill his wife tonight. Tonight. And I said, Allahumma lak alhamd, that Allah helped us to extinguish the fire. Right? And alhamdulillah, they lived a few years together, and now they are divorced. There is mercy in divorce. My dear brothers and sisters, honorable believers, the wife sometimes does not need your advice. She needs one thing, and this is a big tip for big winners. The wife needs you to listen. Most likely when she complains, she just wants to vent, nafis, fudfud, to vent, to vent out. She wants just to talk, to relax and relieve. Let her relieve. Let her talk and talk and talk. Don't interrupt. Let her talk. Wallahi, you will feel that there's a huge difference in your life and in her health because she's nursing you. She's nursing your children. She's nursing herself. Perhaps she's nursing your mom. She needs her help. So let her vent, my dear brothers and sisters. Honorable believers, the khutbah is so long, I have to cut it short. Another trouble we have in marriage, that you are happy with your bedroom, and you're happy with your wife, and you click, and you send it. Facebook. You send it. WhatsApp. You send your ni'am, you send your ni'am, and you are making yourself a big target for the envy. The envy is in the Holy Quran. Envy of the heart, hasad al-qalb, wa hasad al-ayn. The envy of the heart and the envy of the eye. When you send your beautiful house, and beautiful wife, and children, and the nice food, you keep taking pictures and sending, expect divorce, and expect all these ni'am will burn. And if this does not happen, come and face me. I will tell you, impossible. It's going to happen maybe next week, maybe next month, maybe next year. Cover your blessing. My dear brothers and sisters, cover your blessing. Let me wrap it by telling you, when you go to the barbecue, you prepare for the barbecue. You prepare everything. When you go for swimming, whatever. When we go to get married, we don't prepare. You just dash into the marriage. You have that $500 dowry, mother, or $5,000, or whatever, and you dash in the marriage. Actually, each and every one of us, we need a course how to become a, big, a better husband or a better wife. Because when you go to the highway, if this is your car, and you're going in the highway, you can't just dash into the highway. You make an accident. What do you do? You merge. You merge carefully into the highway. Same thing with marriage. With marriage, you need to merge carefully in the marriage. Why? Because you're total strangers. You need carefully to adopt each other, to get used to each other. So realize that you need to merge in the highway and you need to merge into the marriage carefully so you don't make an accident. And get educated. What does it mean to be a husband? Get educated. What does it mean to be a wife? How can I survive trouble? How can I survive turbulence? Turbulence. How can I survive the turbulence, the marriage turbulence? Get prepared, you are likely to succeed in your marriage when you choose the compatible partner. Choose the compatible partner. Don't settle for a loser, unless you are a loser. May Allah forbid any of our brothers and sisters with us here to be losers, or whoever is hearing us or watching us. Allahumma ameen. Respected brothers and sisters, honorable believers, I was surprised when I met a wonderful friend, Muslim brother, he was a staff sergeant, the head of the police department, and he said to me, you know, Sheikh, domestic violence among the police, he said, police get killed because of domestic violence. I said, what does that mean? He said, the highest percentage of police getting killed, it's due to domestic violence. I said, what does that mean? He said, the wife will call to complain about her husband. The police goes to arrest the husband. The wife come and stab the police. He said, two of my friends died like that. 
So domestic violence is affecting us all. I always believe from the bottom of my heart, Rubba Mustamirun Khairun Mumatakallim. And I leave you with this wonderful Arabiya, which I do apologize. I did not have the chance to translate a big winner, an average simple woman advising her daughter, Awsata Arabiya Bnataha, Laylat Zafafiha, Fakalat Aybunaya, Inna Kifarak Tibaitik and Ladi Minhu Kharashti, Wa Ishik and Ladi Fihi Darashti, Ila Wakran, Namta Arfi, Wakarin, Namta Alafi, Fakuni, Lahu Amatan, Yakun Laki Abdan. Wahfani Lahu Khisal and Ashra. أما الأولى والثانية فاصحبيه بالقناعة وعاشريه بحسن السمع والطاعة أما الثالثة والرابعة فالتفقد لموضع عينه وأنفه فلا تقع عيناه منك على قبيح ولا يشمن منك إلا أطيب ريح أما الخامسة والسادسة فالتفقد لطعامه ومنامه فتواتر الجوع ملهبة وتنغيص النوم مغضبة أما السابعة والثامنة فالاحتراس على ماله والادعاء على حشمه وعياله فمن لك الأمر في المال حسن التدبير في التقدير وفي العيال حسن التدبير أما التاسعة والعاشرة فلا تعصي له أمرا ولا تفشي له سرا فإنك إن خالفتي أو غرتي صدرا وإن أفشيتي سرا أكلتي هوا وإن أفشيتي سرا لم تأمني مكرا ثم وإياك ثم وإياك والفرح بين يديه وهو مهتما أي مهموم وإياك والحزن بين يديه وهو فرحا فإن الخصلة الأولى من التقصير والثانية من التكدير وكوني أشد الناس له إعظاما يكون أشدهم لك إكراما واعلمي أنك لا تصلين إلى ما تحبين حتى تؤثري رضاه على رضاك وهو على هواك فيما أحببتي وكرهتي والله يختار لكم الخير أني brothers and sisters I want to wrap this khutbah by asking you to make a very sincere dua for our brother Hisham Abu Laban who always in this line صف الأول in the very first line and during the five salawat this doctor Dr. Hisham Abu Laban Abu Mu'ayyad during the five salawat he try his best to be also in the masjid. His office is close by. Today we are missing him. And we need to make dua for him. Next week he has a very serious surgery. We need to make dua for him and to make a dua for a sister called Umm Umar. Umm Umar is suffering from cancer. So in the sujood make dua. From here to Asr, just remember that in your dua and the angel will say Ameen and you get the same. Whatever you make dua, and for your brothers and sisters in their absence, according to Rasulullah the angel in charge would say, Ameen, and you get the same. Please remember them in their dua. Allahumma laka alhamd, Allahumma sallallahu wa sallam, barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Allahumma shafi akhina, Abu Mu'ayyad. Allahumma shafihi wa shafi akhtana, Um Umar, shifa'an la yagadir wa saqma. Allahumma aftah alihum babu ahmed, fadlak. Allahumma aamilhum bima anta ahli Allah, ya ahli al-taqwa, ya ahli al-maghfira. اللهم ارحم حالهم اللهم أرنا عجائب قدرتك في شفائهم اللهم ارحم المؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم اهدي ذريتنا اللهم شافي مرضانا اللهم حين حياة طيبة اللهم اجعل يا رب العالمين آخر كلامنا لا إله إلا الله اللهم اجمعنا أحباب المفردوس العالم وغير سابق آداب اللهم حرر الأقصى اللهم حرر الأقصى اللهم حرر الأقصى اللهم انصر اخواننا المستضعفين في كل مكان واجمعنا واحبابهم بفردوس الاعلى اللهم يا رب فرجيب مس جرانتس يور فرجيبنس اللهم جايد اور تشيلدرن هيل اور لاف وانز اللهم يناتس وذ اور لاف وانز ان بارادايس اللهم جرانت كومبليت ريكفري فور اور برادر دكتور ابو مؤيد هشام ابو لبن ان اور سيستر ام عمر جرانت ان كومبليت ريكفري ان شفاء رب العالمين اللهم Whatever our brothers and sisters oppressed, make them victorious, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Unite us with their loved ones in paradise. Allahumma ameen, alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu 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 wa sal